or something too. Urban Hope, near and dear to my heart. Before I got to Toronto, um, there was four students that was around the neighborhood that uh, already get, uh, sucked up into gang life and and got into major trouble. One was, uh, unfortunately, we found out one died uh, from gang shooting. Three ended up in jail. Unfortunately, we haven't heard of them from them since. When we started Urban Hope, we've had a bunch of different students grow up in the program. Four of our university students have grown up through that program and, and ran all of our summer programs this year and all of our youth and kids programs. And uh, two of them are graduating this year from University of Toronto and, and uh, now T TMU, formerly known as Ryerson University. And uh, two, the other two are just starting university and they have been great success stories of our neighborhood, of our um, tough neighborhood or inner city neighborhood in Toronto. If you want to see more of that, you want to help uh, give to that, you can do that through the sportsreverence.com. You can see our sponsorships. You can go to churchinthecity.ca as well and give that way. All of it will go towards the, the Urban Hope program and helping seeing this mentorship program grow. It's kids helping kids. And uh, that's the beautiful picture of our university students helping the younger kids from high school and, and even the younger ones that are in grade school. And, and uh, that's what Urban Hope's all about. So if you're interested in giving and supporting that, please do so and thank you very much i really want to jump into this uh sarver piece um as you know um for those of you who don't know quick recap robert sarver owner of the phoenix suns was hit with a 10 million dollar fine which is the max under the current cba in the nba and has been banned from the nba and the wnba for a year due to uh we'll call it a systemic inability to knock down racism and sexism and inappropriateness in the workplace. Um, so I pose this question to you guys. How do we draw the line? Where do we draw the line? Um, and and I, will, I will toss this out there. Not as, and I'm not saying this is the main reason, but did Robert Sarver get more scrutiny because he's a white guy? I'll leave, I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, Dan, you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. Like, what I really wish when media releases these stories is they give, they, they, they actually start going back to what journalism is. They actually release both sides of what actually happened. They release, they used to release transcripts of conversations or, or, or things like that and give full context to it as well. Um, for example, when, when John Gruden got scrutinized, they just said all these things about John Gruden being a misogynist and racist and anti-gay, uh, whatever you call that, homophobic. And then you see all the actual information come out and say, oh, wow, this wasn't really what they were saying. They, they, led, they led the story. And I feel like that's how I come at everything media puts out, especially when I don't know the full story. Yes, I'm sure he is uh pretty dumb in saying some of his stories and using the n-word even though he's repeating the n-word um i'm not sure about his sexism or, or 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 other stuff like that that's the only thing i saw was the the racial stuff when i hear lebron james talk and say oh this guy you know he needs to be held at a higher account um he needs to be held to the standard that players are held to. Just because he's an owner doesn't mean he should get leniency. And well, he got fined ten million dollars and suspended for a year. So I don't know how much more there is to it. When I look at it, all I see is we need to know the facts. Um, what is the accountability of the players that are misogynistic to women? You know what I mean? Um, there's if you want to hold the same standard then let's hold the same standard i think we'll find uh, some pretty dirty closets if you know what i'm saying and the the angle that i don't know if anyone's ever uh, has discussed this yet but like lebron james and and chris paul and their camp of people um i i heard like a year ago that they want to make a play to actually buy a franchise after they're retired i think phoenix was one of the places where they talked about like is this is this a push to get 
their ownership out so they can buy it at a discount rate, like, maybe. Yeah. Like, how racist can the owner be? He has a black general manager, a black coach. Um, you know, the starting five is black. Like, <laughs> come on. Like, what do you mean? He's racist. And, and it's also weird because he's one of the few that own a WNBA team as well. Now, granted, I, I think, Dan, you're, you're absolutely right. We don't have both sides. We just have the one side coming out. And I think we're all in agreement that this type of talk and... and framing of, of conversation is wrong, right? We, we, we're, not, we're not saying that it's right or the case may be is. Um, I think the angle we're coming at it is, where is the standard set? And who are we applying the standard to, right? I mean, LeBron James is being championed as this great social justice warrior. He's on top of things. He speaks out for the underprivileged, um, things like that. But he picks and chooses what he wants to talk about. Same with Chris Paul. You guys are so easy to say, oh, well, you know, he's an owner. Yes, blah, blah, blah. Well, then what are you doing about it? Are you not going to play games? Right? Are you going to, where, where, how, where and how are you taking your stand? And for example, one of their sponsors is saying, hey, Robert Sarver comes, we're not going to sponsor you guys. Isn't PayPal out as a sponsor? They not yet, okay. not yet. Was that who you're talking about? Um, yeah, but that's that's putting where your money where your mouth is, right? That's because okay. I, I know maybe who knows what kind of revenue PayPal gets from being in the NBA, but that's saying, hey, this is my line, this has been crossed. I want to do something about it, and I'm willing to take a financial hit for this. It kind of it kind of comes back to Kyrie. I mean. He took a line, took a stand, gave up a lot of money, a lot of ridicule for his beliefs. And now we now there's all sorts of data saying maybe lockdowns and all that kind of stuff wasn't the best way to go. But has anybody apologized to Kyrie? Has anybody thrown him props in the <laughs> mainstream media? No, absolutely not. Um, and so and my, my next question is really like, how do you guys, as as reverends, you know, deal with conversation on a daily basis about with hypocrisy and you know this left leaning ideology in, in your daily conversations with with people who may be in your church, maybe not in part of your church? Like, how do you guys approach that conversation in, in, a, in a way that still incorporates God and doesn't you don't feel like smacking the person in the face? Who's first, Drew? Well, it, yeah, it, it's it's hard when people want to take such hard lines on stuff because uh, it it always opens up for people to look at you a bit harder too, right? right. So, um, like turning around to what we believe faith wise is that yeah, we're all imperfect people, like. Yeah, you can find fault in any Christian and we see people getting pointed out all the time. It's like, yeah, that's what happens when you try and it, it's usually people that are trying to put themselves up on a pedestal saying, you know, I'm at a different level, different standard than everybody. That's the people that really crash and burn because no one's able to live up to the standard that they're trying to set. And so what we believe is that, yeah, we're not perfect. Jesus is the only one that was perfect and we're trying to be more like him, but we're never going to be perfect. So don't compare yourself to me, yeah. right? Don't, don't look at me to be your example. I think that's tough when you get into these athletes, right? Cause we all sort of put them up as role models and guys that we want to emulate and idolize. And that's dangerous. That's when, uh, cause they're, they're going to make mistakes we're going to make mistakes and yeah, some mistake, like obviously there's accountability there. Like it doesn't mean you're free to make mistakes. Like this guy obviously should be punished. Was it too harsh? I don't like, that's not for us to decide, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's, I don't know if I was talking in circles there, right? Dan, go. No, it's good. I think, 
Yeah, I think that's uh, you hit it on the head, actually, Drew. And when when you have a conversation, especially I'm in Toronto, right? Everyone is uh, opposing the biblical values of and principles. Um, it's very anti-church and anti that. And um, so what I like to do is I, I I do exactly what you said. You you build a, a, a out of the conversation, you build a friendship with the person. You you find a common ground and find a way to be able to get to a point where you can disagree and still be friends. And, and, and from our point of view and, and Christianity, you just love on them. You care about them and you still go the extra mile for them. Um, if they ask for, if they need you to walk two miles, you go, you walk three and you, you go that route because that's what Jesus would have done. And we have to do that because who else is going to do it? Our schools aren't doing it. Our, our society is telling you the opposite. And you still have to stand firm in your beliefs, but you just overwhelm them with constantly caring about them. And then they'll see, hopefully there's, we'll see, we'll see God do a work in them. We're just there to be faithful. That's what I believe that we got to do. I'm not going to logic someone into their their beliefs, right? They're, they're, they're going to believe what they're going to believe. It's a, it's a revelation. It's a transformation that God does in them. Do you think you have to be, as a Christian, you have to be okay with people not accepting that? Or do you have to really find a way to to make somebody be okay with your hardline stance? For me, no. I, I, I don't have to feel that way. That's between them and with how they want to live their life that's between them and god one day they'll they'll find out um what truth is and it says every knee will bow so uh my goal is to still direct them and, and care about them and and open a door for them but <laughs> there's there's people in in christian Christ, in christianity uh, i wouldn't just say a little amount a major amount of people in christianity that i that we all disagree with and we have to be we can't change their minds right it's got to be a god thing yeah i i think sometimes we get caught up in thinking that we have to come up with the good the greatest argument to convince someone uh what we believe right and it's no that's not how it works it's like he said we follow the great commandment and the Holy Spirit is working on each person. And until that clicks, uh, yeah, we just do our job and let God do his. No, I, I think you guys have kind of married what we were talking about very well together here. I mean, we want to live to the standard of Jesus. I think that's that's our goal. Yeah. Um, we, want to, we want to apply that to everything that we do. And we, we look at what we see in the media a lot of times is picking and choosing where the standard applies. You have people on TV like Don Lemon, uh, you know, can, can say whatever they want because he's a colored person. If, if, if a white guy were to say that on TV, he'd be canceled and like that. And, I, I, and we see this all the time in, I like to use LeBron James as my, as my scapegoat because he's like very recognizable. And you can really see the dichotomy what he does. If you're going to stand up for one human rights issue and one situation, you should need to stand up for all of them in that same vein. You can't choose. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to go for this one black person, but not this other black person. Or if the roles reverse, the black and white person, I'm not going to talk with the white person at all. Um, and this, the the, hypo the hypocrisy is it's all about. From what I you know see on TV and in the media, it's like what can make me look good to people in the world, right? And then, you know, as Christians, we have to, I think you guys are right, we have to be okay if somebody doesn't agree with us and doesn't want to talk to us for a while. Because what's more important, their friendship or doing what God says? Um, a great conversation, guys. Always, uh, I always forget that you guys are good at what you do. To me, you're still my little brother and little dumb kid who I coached basketball. But uh, when we have these kind of conversations. It really sees that you guys have uh, done the right thing and followed God's word. So really cool to see that. Ooh.